<laughs> Thank you. All right. Nice that you're all here, guys. Welcome. Welcome to Amsterdam. Thanks for coming here. Um, we're Bart and Marijn. I heard there will be still some people coming in, so don't be worried about that. Uh, we want to get started anyway. Um, yeah, so we are super excited to be here today. We have some very, very nice things we wanted to show you guys. And we also have access to our new website uh, that we're going to share with you later. Uh, but before we delve into all the sexy stuff, we first want to share with you how it all started. It all began with a beer crate back in Yes Delft, where me and Marai met. He was standing on a beer crate and he was pitching the idea about an electric scooter. At the time, it wasn't the best pitch I ever heard, but he had fire in his eyes and he'd done some decent research and even convinced a very nice designer to create some initial concepts. So, yeah, we had a nice fit. We clicked together in terms of character, skills, and especially our vision. We wanted to create something that could help accelerate the transition towards renewable energy. So we got together and we did a small pre-order campaign in the Netherlands to find out whether people would be interested to buy a scooter, an electric one at that, from a startup online. And they were. So we quickly sold out our first batch. Uh, some of those are still with us here in this room, so that's nice. Thanks for sticking with us. At the time, we thought, like, maybe in a, a year or maybe one and a half year, we could get to market. You know, how much longer would it take than a software startup? <laughs> it wouldn't take us as long as did Tesla. Uh, that's what we thought. So now, three years later, uh, hardware is a lot of hard work, um, but we're happy to be finally unveiling our, our product to you guys. Um, yeah, so we uh, did some pre-orders. We got then our first prototype ready, and we raised our first million. With that, we hired our first engineering team, and these were awesome guys. We got these guys from uh, the TU Delft. You have there the Delft Dream Teams. These are some of the best engineers we found that have worked on building world-class vehicles. So they work on building solar cars, solar boats, rockets, and race cars. And uh, these they built using composite uh, technologies, electric motors, and batteries. So, and that's exactly what we're using to build our scooter. So it was a perfect fit. Um, and for now, I want to take a short moment to thank these guys, because all of them are still with us today, including their partners. <laughs> and uh, thanks. You guys rock. You're awesome. <laughs> yeah, and we, we love to continue continue this journey together and you know, see an app scooter on every corner of the streets um, maybe a couple of years down the road. Yep. And um, together with, our, uh, with this engineering team, we did tons of engineering and finally got our Alpha prototype up and running. However, we didn't have near to enough funds to start building our pre-production series or set up our production line. So in 2017, we raised 5 million euros online, spread over two rounds. That was actually the maximum that was allowed according to European laws. With the 5 million, we broke almost every crowdfunding uh, record in Europe, thanks to 2,400 of you guys investing in us. We even had to give back 200,000 euros because the round was oversubscribed. But thanks for your trust in us. So with that money, we, we had enough to start the pre-production uh, engineering, move to Amsterdam, and scale up our team to prepare our go-to-market. So in Amsterdam, we had all the space for the equipment to start prototyping and to um, assemble our pre-production series. We also grew our team from 10 people to almost 50 people today and um, before, uh, uh, soon we're launching our new funding round. But first, we're doing a rebranding. Changing the name of the company, saying goodbye to Bolt, and welcoming 
a new name. So, why are we rebranding? Well, um, after checking all the countries that we want to launch AppScooter in, and not only AppScooter, also our future uh, products, uh, detailed legal research pointed out that there were 14 red flags for Bolt that could cause some serious legal claims in the near future. Our lawyers strongly advised us to change the name of the company, and so we did. So, um, we're saying goodbye to Bolt, and we're welcoming a new name. Are you guys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. So, from today onwards, the company will be named Etergo. It's the same scooter, same app scooter, but with a new company brand name. So, on the screen, you can see our new logo, new colors, and new style. So, how did we come up with Etergo? Um, from a list of hundreds of alternatives, we liked Etergo the most. Also, it scored very good in cross-cultural stickiness, and most people could spell it without needing any instructions, which is very important for word-of-mouth marketing. Also, it was globally available from a legal perspective, and last but not least, taken apart, at ergo actually means therefore in Latin. And therefore brings us to the why of things. Why did we found this company in the first place? Why go and build electric scooters? Why does this matter to the world? Why is this important? That's a very good question. It's important because of this. We need to speed up the transition towards renewable energy. That's why Etergo, and therefore, App scooter. So you all know this graph. It's the CO2 levels. They're rising. Um, it's global warming. It's a big problem. We're all aware of it, and we need to work hard to try and solve this. This was the reason why we launched this company, and um, we still believe this is one of the most pressing issues of this decade, and we're very passionate about trying to help solve this. Um, and we also believe that there are still more people needed to make sure that we solve this together on a global scale. So if you look at the personal transport market, you can basically divide that into two parts, the cars and the motorized two-wheelers. And what most people don't know is there are actually being may more, way more motorized two-wheelers being sold yearly than cars. So if you want to solve the problem of global warming, it's not just enough to tackle cars, you also need to solve it for two-wheelers. On top of that, actual motorized two-wheelers are 20 under 20, so 2,700 times as polluting as a car, which is pretty bad. And this is research that's done by nature. And even the latest scooters on the market are up to 15 times as polluting still today as a car. Um, so it's not enough to just do it for cars. However, cars are being taken care of by companies such as Tesla, and we think that's awesome. However, if you look at Tesla, a Tesla is not that affordable. It, only 0.5% of the population worldwide can actually afford the cheapest Tesla today. So at $35,000, a Tesla is not an affordable car, as Musk likes to call it. If you were to look at solving the global problem with 0.5% of vehicles being replaced by cars like this, you're not getting very far. So it's a good start, but a lot more needs to happen. And even if you look at the most recent electric vehicles, the cheapest one that we're manufacturing worldwide, they have trouble getting below the $20,000 mark. Um, so we need an alternative for the majority of the population that is actually affordable for them. And that's why we chose to start up a company with motorized two-wheelers. We, for this, developed a three-stage Master plan. <laughs> I'm not sure where we got that from, but... Um, so, the first step in the master plan is 
App Scooter, it's a low volume premium price product that's still affordable for a quarter of the world's population. This allows us to build a premium brand to um, launch ourselves as a European um, automotive company building quality products. We use the, the funds we gain from this to build a higher volume um, yeah, mid-price model, affordable for up to 40% of the people. And well, you guessed it, we can use the money we gain from this to build a higher volume product that's affordable for up to 60% of the world's population. With this, we believe we can achieve the skill that's needed to truly help impact in solving this problem. Um, yeah, so that's the plan that we have. So if you look at scooters, why do we need new electric scooters? If you look at the current roads, you don't see that many electric scooters yet, and there's a reason for that. Um, they haven't been good enough yet. So if you want somebody to buy your product, it's not enough to make it green. You actually need a product that, you know, if somebody wants to buy it, they want something that's better than the current alternatives. So if you need to make something electric, you make it, need to make it better than its petrol alternatives. So what is wrong with current scooters? Well, the first thing is safety. Um, if you look at, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a harsh image, but it shows you the, the impact it can have. Like if you're driving like this, that's, that's very dangerous. Um, for 40 years, traffic fatalities have been decreasing um, worldwide. So that, that, that's been a great thing. That's been due to innovations and good regulations. But for the last couple of years, smartphones have single-handedly put a halt to this decrease and are now the single biggest cause of traffic fatalities on a global scale. This is because you have 160 times higher chance of crashing when using your smartphone while driving. And the problem is that all the regulations that have been trying to prevent this have actually failed miserably at tackling you know, this problem and preventing these deaths. So, yeah, that's an issue. 70% of people are still using their smartphone while driving. What that means is that people actually care that much about the functionality that the smartphone provides them while they're driving. So basically, you know, using your music, have, staying in contact with your friends, we find that that important to be able to risk that. Then if you look secondly at other problems we see, it's mainly functionality. Um, so from a engineering perspective, we find them very uninspiredly engineered. You have very limited storage area because batteries are simply being put in trunks. Um, and you know, if you put a battery in there, you can pretty much not put that much else in there. Um, also, there's a lot of scooters out there which don't have that much range yet. So there's a lot of range limitations, which leaves a lot of people in the dark. Thirdly, uh, something we find very important as well is style. Um, yeah, we all like to buy something we, you know, we feel attracted to. Um, we felt in the market there wasn't anything that we liked and that we could fall in love with. Um, yeah, so we, we felt the need to, to build something that could do that. And actually, that's what we tried doing with App Scooter. We tried to create something that would be better than its petrol competitors. So we don't believe in building a green product just to make it green. We believe in building something that's better in every way. So a product you can fall in love with, and it just happens to be electric. So without further ado, let us show you what we've made.
So that was uh, Joris and Thomas driving the scooters, our first engineer and first designer. Thanks, guys, you were awesome. Um, so how did we fit all that functionality into a scooter? Basically, it's, this is our secret. It's our uh, EV drivetrain and the monocoque we use. It's built on composites. So a normal scooter has like a tube frame within it that takes up a lot of space. We have a monocoque frame. That means the outside is also the frame that supports it. It's way stronger and it performs a lot better during handling as well. What that gives us is the opportunity to put your battery in here and save a whole bunch of storage space in there. And it also gives us the opportunity to create one of the biggest glove compartments on the market. Um, yeah, and Marijn can tell you all about what you can do with all that space and the nice features that AppScooter has. Yes, yes. And I would like to start with the cockpit. We focused on building a vehicle that is much safer than its yeah, than current electric or petrol scooters. That's why we focus on having your hands on the handlebar and your phone in your pocket while driving. To do that, App Scooter comes with a seven-inch touchscreen and handlebar controls. You can use it for navigation. Um, you can select your recent locations uh, using the handlebar buttons and you get a full screen turn by turn navigation that is optimized for scooters. You can also use it to run your favorite apps, such as music, for example. Just connect your Apple or Android phone to App Scooter via Bluetooth, and you can stream Spotify directly. If you want to pause it or go to the next song, simply click the handlebar buttons, and it works. The other thing you can do is you can remotely control your phone. You can find your recent or favorite contacts within seconds, and you can pick up or drop a call with the click of a button. So next, our battery. Our old butter concept had, um, had a little bit more range, but per kilometer, it was more expensive than needed and the battery wasn't removable. And since a removable battery was the single most requested feature on our website, we decided to change the concept. We went from six smaller modules to three bigger modules. That is, the, the, and the bigger modules are super easy to take out. So, how do you charge it? You can charge it overnight. Simply plug it in or take the battery out. Um, we, uh, yeah, you'll charge it overnight, but we also have a fast charger available that charges it within, uh, to 80% of the capacity in one and a half hours. As I said, taking out the batteries is very easy. I'll show you how that works. So, this is our battery. It's about, um, thank you, it's a beauty. Um, it's about seven kilo kilograms, so it's pretty easy to carry. We build a nice strap so you can you know, put it on your shoulder so you don't have to hold it all day. Um, yeah, we recently got the comment about somebody that said it looked like a Gucci bag. I'm not sure it was a compliment or not, but <laughs> thanks anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, and this is how you put it back in. Yeah, and so because the, the modules got a little bigger, we increased the, um, the range of the base model to 80 kilometers at 20 kilometers per hour. Um, if you want more, uh, more range, want to accelerate faster, you can also buy a second or even a third module to go up to 240 kilometers of range. That is ideal for long commuters or businesses, for example. And the best thing about this modular battery concept is that you can just start with one module and buy more if you need more. So for example, if you move places and your commuting distance get longer, you just buy a second or a third module and it will fit your, your needs. Um, AppScooter also accelerates, accelerates much faster 
than its petrol counterparts. It goes from zero to 45 kilometers per hour in 3.9 seconds. So I can assure you, it will put a smile upon your face every time you're at a traffic light. <laughs> However, if you like it a little bit more chill, you can also put it in a normal mode and it will accelerate a little bit slower. So what about storage? Well, we can fit three times as much stuff in App Scooter than you can in a Vespa. That's like putting the trunk of a big Volvo station car into a Fiat 500. This is a game changer. So besides being able to put two helmets into this beauty, you can also fit other stuff. For example, you don't have to buy that uh, boring city car anymore that you can't park anywhere. If you go grocery shopping, you can take grocery for one week, um, and you can just park your app scooter in front of the supermarket, and you will be home for dinner in time, because you don't have to send in traffic jams. So you can also, if you go shopping in the city center, you can, t you can uh, fit all your clothing in there while you're, you're enjoying a drink, and App Scooter will keep your stuff safe. If you go, if you go uh, working out, it fits an entire gym bag. So you can take it up to work, after work you do your thing, and it, no problem. If you go to the beach, you can take everything you want. And most importantly, <laughs> What's in this one? Our buddy seat <laughs> is large enough. Hey! <laughs> there it is. It's the old one. It's the one it all started with. Well, we, we now have our very own Bob, who can make sure that we don't drink and drive. Thanks, Bob. You can take those to the foyer. We'll come pick some, some later. We're using the cab tonight. <laughs> don't drink and drive. All right. So, you all remember the configurator we used to have? Well, with over 220,000 people configuring a design, we had plenty of input to determine what were the most popular color combinations that we're going to deliver first. So, these are the ones, these are the seven colors that we're going to be able to deliver first. So. Next to the yellow one and the matte blue with titanium one, which I specifically like, we have five additional colors that we hope you find as awesome as we think. And they'll be available from, for pre-order from tonight. So that's awesome. How are we going to manufacture all of this? Well, let's just say we're not going to build them in our basement anymore. We've done that, and it's, uh, it's not the best thing in the world. Um, we're actually currently in the bidding process, the final stages of selecting a contract manufacturer um, that's going to be solely responsible for building these. So these are companies that have built high-end consumer electronics and already complete vehicles for other automotive companies as well. So these are guys who really know their job. Um, they can take care of the quality that we think you guys should expect from us. And yeah, we think it's going to be awesome, and we we'll hope to, to sign one of them somewhere in the next uh, couple of weeks. So that will be very exciting. We already went to a bunch of places around the world, visiting factories and everything. We've seen half of the world already. Um, yeah, so hopefully we'll, we'll get that soon. Then next up, how will you get it delivered to your door? Actually, we have the Etergo service vans for that. We have a dedicated service expert that will drive with your app scooter to your door, having it delivered fully functional and ready to drive. If you then have any problems that we cannot fix with an update over the air, he comes and drives to your location where you have the problem, and he comes and fixes it there for you. So this is pretty awesome. Um, yeah. And with that Etergo, single Etergo service van, we can replace about 100 conventional dealers. Uh, so this means you don't even have to go to a random workshop 
to get your scooter fixed by somebody who doesn't know the product yet, who doesn't understand electrics, um, and doesn't know any of the software that we're using. We actually have these uh, service experts trained by our very own engineers, and we write all the manuals, we, de we design the entire interior of the service vans to make sure we can provide you guys with the very best service experience that we think you should have. So, what does that all mean? The big question is, the pre-orders, when do they start? Tonight. Tonight we're opening pre-orders. And where do we open them? Across Europe. So, how does that work? The first 100 pre-orders in a single region will receive their app scooter in 2019. So, how does that work? Well, we'll show you in a small video. So, as you're going to see on the animation, we're going to start in Europe, and then later this year we'll also open pre-orders in Asia. Yeah, and again, just to explain it, the first regions to cross the 100 pre-order mark will receive their app scooter first in 2019. Um, so, that means, you know, if you know any friends, get them to pre-order to make sure you guys are, you know, first on the list. Uh, also important remark, we'll be delivering the, the lower speed versions first before the, uh, the higher speed. So, how do you actually pre-order? Well, we have an access code to our brand new website for you guys. Why do we have an access code? Because we want to give you access to pre-order before anyone else in the world. What that means is you can actually go to etergo.com, fill out the, you know, get app scooter access code, and you can actually pre-order there. So that's pretty awesome. What you also can do there is pre-register for our upcoming funding round. And yeah, with that, we've come to the end of our presentation. Um, so we would like you to thank you a lot for coming here. Uh, you've been an awesome audience. Thank you for, for laughing at my silly jokes. Um, <laughs> and we also would like to invite you to the foyer, where we have a small surprise for you. And our entire team is waiting there for you to help you out with any questions you might have. And yeah, and we also have some drinks. So if you would like to go to the foyer, that would be great. Um, later we'll have a press event where uh, only the press is allowed. So I'll be attending that. But Marijn will be available also for speaking to. Definitely. Cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah.